Hello and welcome to the Press Start Podcast, Press Start Australia's video game discussion podcast. I'm your host, you and joined today by my fellow gamers and co-hosts, Kieran. Hello. Shannon. Hello. And making his return, Brody. Hello. Good to How be back. How are you doing, Brody? What's What's been going on? Emerge from the sun. Uh, yeah, you know, I've been, yeah. Uh, what have I been doing? What, you know, doing what have family you been playing? stuff. What games have you been playing in, in your absence? Uh, well, Children of the Sun, for one, which the review just came out, so go read that. Uh, Harold Halibut. I've been playing a lot of Ballot. How do you say it? Balatro? Oh, Balatro. yeah. Balatro. That's, uh, that's a bit of an addictive game, that. Uh, and, yeah, and just been watching a lot of wrestling, because it's been WrestleMania season, so a lot of that. Was, yeah. was like, WrestleMania really all it, like, was it... Did it live up to the hype? Like, I feel like I've seen lots of people talking about it like it was some sort of Avengers Endgame moment. Is it? Is that uh, an appropriate yeah. comparison? Yeah, oh, look. Yeah, look, that's a dramatic way of putting it, I suppose. But it feels like the culmination of, like, say, uh, four to five years of, like, pretty decent storytelling in wrestling, like with the Roman Reigns Tribal Chief stuff and the Bloodline. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Night one was a little mid, but night two was pretty good. So, okay, it was up there. Cool. Uh, and sorry, what's the game you said you reviewed? I've already blanked. Children of Children of the Sun. Yeah. Children of the Sun. How was that? Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, news came out today that it's not selling so hot. So uh, if you're after a game, uh, Kieran brought it to my attention <laughs> that I used the term. Uh, it's like a score attack gauntlet. Like it's very similar to like Neon White, and it has that very satisfying leaderboard chase uh, core loop to it. Uh, it's not exactly the, the same in terms of gameplay. Like it's not a platforming acrobatic shooting game like that it's more you skirt the perimeter of an, of an area you have to like ta- it's like it's almost like sniper elite meets something like neon white like you 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 basically play as a bullet that gets fired out of a gun and then every time you impact you get to like change your trajectory and you got to try and take everyone out in a level like it's really addictive trying to find like the best paths through things and yeah just hunting those people on the leaderboard it's uh yeah it's a addictive game and i really hope that uh it does huh. find an audience because we really want these console ports we want them bad okay cool that mm. I, I knew nothing about this game and up until this moment and that actually sounds really cool and i, I don't think it's that expensive i think it's maybe like 20 bucks yeah or just over 20 bucks or something like that like so yeah it's it's worth a worth a dip it's a devolver digital special yeah. as well, right i wasn't gonna yeah. say it because i feel like people would just know oh well, brody's <laughs> just saying it because it's devolver but... <laughs> and look that's partly true but no it is really good it there's is really a good. certain style to the games that they pick I, I don't think that's like crazy to have an affinity with uh with their published games um Anyhow, we better crack on. We do have plenty to talk about this week, including a new Prince of Persia game, Star Wars Outlaws, and the future of Dead Space. Uh, but first, Brody, I'm going to come right back at you because uh, really? you have been busy watching the Fallout TV series. If I'm not mistaken, you've actually seen all of the episodes, right? All eight. Yes, I have. Yeah. All eight. Very cool. Um, obviously, as you're watching slash listening to this, um, there's only the first episode out on Amazon they're, at the moment. All out. I think it's... They're all out. They're all out? Yeah. Really? Huh. <laughs> okay, cool. My weekend plans just changed. <laughs> I swear, like when I looked at it, it was just the first episode. But okay, nice. Awesome. Well, I'm going to go and binge them later on. Um, but Brody, you've already done that. How did you rate the season as a whole? I thought it was really fun. Uh, it's much better than I expected it would be. Like, I don't know what I was expecting. Um, I knew they weren't going to riff off the game, at, like the games themselves, and they were going to do an original story, which I guess gave me a little bit of pause. But I think what they've delivered is actually pretty good. Like, it's probably even comparable to the ones that you'd get from, like, say, Fallout 3 or 4. Um, mm-hmm. The new characters are great. Uh, it's all really well acted. The only thing I'd say is maybe, like, the the more esteemed actors that they have in the show, like your Kyle McLaughlin's and your Michael Emerson's and stuff, they don't really, you know, they're, they're not around a lot, but um, like the new cast, like uh, Ella Purnell and stuff, who I th- I've never seen her before, but she's been in things like, um, uh, what's it called? Is it something jackets? Yellow jackets, yep. which is a, a show I've not seen. Um, but yeah, she does a great job uh, as the lead. Uh yeah, it's just a fun, fun thing. There's so much fan service. It's crazy. Like, uh, mm. I was like, just constantly noticing like little things. And I'd like turn to Katie because we were watching it. And I'd say, that's from the game. <laughs> you were that and guy. She was, <laughs> I was that guy. She was, she, she was well over it by the end. But uh, yeah, look, uh, 
just a lot of fun. Uh, I, I think that's where I sort of separate it from The Last of Us because, I mean, this is getting pretty good reviews as well, but obviously mm. The Last of Us was very solemn. It was very grave, very serious, whereas this can have those moments, but it's still just on the whole just really fun. Like, the soundtrack is so good. Like, it's very error appropriate like just 50s like little bops like you'd get on your pit boy walking around uh washington mm. fallout 3 uh and like pretty much every time they have like a big action sequence like they do like the Zack snyder slow-mo and like have like one of those songs playing over it so there's like a a level of levity to it but um mm. Uh, when it does get action based as well though it doesn't shy away from like gore at all like it is it's pretty it's pretty full on like people like get blown to bits um which can i just say like i feel as video game adaptations are becoming like more of a thing they all seem so violent and i'm just like so worried it's not doing the arguments around like violence in video games mm, any favor yeah, that's true <laughs> but um yeah it's it's definitely far more video gamey a show than like last of us was like that felt like more a story adaptation but yeah this definitely takes all aspects that you'd expect from fallout and i think mm. really delivers a really fun and really pretty good show um it's given me the itch to you know go back to fallout in some capacity i haven't decided which game i'm thinking maybe trying to f- get into fallout 76 but uh i don't know exactly what state that's in so yeah, yeah let's let's put a pin in that conversation momentarily i do want to come back to that um kieran and shannon i think you've watched the first episode so far yeah i see you both nodding cool um kieran let's come to you how did how have you what's been i guess your first impression of the show um yeah i'm, I'm enjoying it Pro- like pretty much for all the same reasons that Brody's already described, although obviously I've only watched yeah. the first episode. I think the thing that stood out to me the most so far is the set design, like, or just like the production yeah. in general. It's a very well put together show. Um, it looks so expensive. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in the behind the scenes stuff I was looking at before it aired, like the vault was like a practical set. Like they built like a multi-story vault instead of just like green screening everything, which I think is really cool. Mm. Um, and yeah even stuff like the power armor which like could have looked really goofy is like pretty like bang on um yeah yeah. it doesn't have the feeling of like being a fan film or anything like that it does feel like there's kind of budget and aesthetics to it and i don't know if it was just like i admittedly i was kind of had it on my monitor as i was kind of like half preparing the show notes for today um but there's kind of like it just kind of feels very filmic like with the i don't know if they actually shot it on film but just the there's kind of like the fuzz to it the grain to it um I just I just thought it was really nicely done. And I guess, like, mm. given Jonathan Nolan's kind of lineage and it was Westworld they worked on previously, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just kind of felt like it hit a lot of similar sort of notes. Um, at least back when I watched Westworld, I must admit I did fall as, off that show. As someone um, who liked Westworld as well, though, the only thing I was disappointed about with this show slightly is that there's no real title sequence. Like, there's mm. none to speak of, really like yeah there's it's basically just like pops up with like fallout but like there's no like you know minute long title sequence with a cool theme or anything like that so that was one mm. thing i noticed i was like oh, that's a shame but yeah more, more time for fun action i suppose what did you make of the opening shannon kind of like the setup of i uh, like guess like the kind of pre-fallout era and the introduction of the vaults yeah i thought it was it was really cool um it was very similar to the games um i thought the mm. explosions and how they handled that um really well done i'm glad they didn't spend too much time dwelling on it it was kind of just yeah setting it up so you knew sort of what to expect and then straight into it um without too long so i love that whole scene and sort of everything that happened after that felt very reminiscent of any of the four games that you played um and yeah i really loved the first half of the episode it was much gorier than expected like some of those um kills i had to sort of turn away from i was expecting them to, to cut from but they didn't like they just went for it um second half of the episode i I, yeah i probably would need to watch it again because i feel like i missed a few things but yeah overall echo everything that everyone has said felt very high value like there was some real gamer moments where like they'll hang for like 10 seconds on a thing but i assume that'll um lessen as the episodes go on um and yeah it didn't feel too in your face i feel like if you would played the games you would know what that is if you were just watching it for the first time you wouldn't think about it too much um, and it was all contextually relevant, right? So, yeah, I'm I'm yeah. excited to watch the rest. Yeah, I think it, as an introduction to the series, um, it starts really 
quite strong um and did yeah i did kind of immediately feel the itch to go and play some sort of fallout game again having just watched the first episode and if uh, brody's still kind of feeling that way after watching the whole season that's very exciting indeed but brody like you said you kind of felt like going and playing a fallout game is there one that's kind of front of mind or do you sort of feel like it's a bit of a missed opportunity to put out something fresh to coincide with the launch of the show yeah it's a good point especially like with rumors of say fallout 3 getting a remake or a remaster yeah. uh yeah. that's sort of been kicking around um new vegas too right i think as well yeah that's, yeah right. um look I, I don't know i feel like they could easily still use this opportunity to push fallout 76 um because it's like that has been constantly updated and it's kind of be like if you mm. like this story go create your own in this world mm. um like I feel like there would be fun there, but yeah, look, I, I see the point that they could have easily, well, not easily. Games are hard to make, but they could have uh, lined it up with something in that regard. So yeah, I'd say it's a bit of a missed opportunity, but they still have things that they can, or they can even use I, it to push Game Pass. Like you can play all the Fallout games here. Yeah, I definitely yeah. think Fallout Three would have been the one. Like I think that's like mm. the first game that changed the series dramatically and was like super mainstream. Um, and like, yeah, I don't think anyone was expecting Fallout 5, but like to remaster that or like just do something with it to bring it up to speed as much as possible, I think would have been a big opportunity. Or even have it announced, like to have something announced that it's on the way, um, yeah. I think would be like, good. Uh, yeah, obviously, obviously Bethesda Softworks are kind of their hands full with Starfield just being out and Elder Scrolls 6, the next cab out of the rank, but... Yeah, like, if I'm not mistaken, right, like, Obsidian had sort of pitched to do, like, another New Fallout Vegas. or, like, a remake of New Vegas. I assume that uh, the, they probably wanted to do New Vegas 2, maybe? Yeah. But I think yeah. the guy who's, like, lead on at least Pentiment, I think his name's Josh Sawyer or something like that, yeah. um, I think he worked on New Vegas and he probably has some affinity to that. Mm. I think there'd be a chance for them to maybe tie something in with Season 2 because it's heavily teased. Yeah. Mm. yeah that would be cool um but you're right in the meantime all the fallout games are on game pass and uh that's not a bad deal um all right let's keep moving on with the news and after the leak last week the rogue prince of persia a new roguelite side scrolling game uh, was announced uh from evil empire some of the folks behind um an iconic example of the genre that is uh dead cells i believe Evil Empire kind of produced a lot of the kind of post-game kind of content, some of the add-ons that were released later, um, but certainly no genre, uh, no stranger to the roguelike genre. Um, Kieran, what do you hmm. make of the game? I think you kind of were on the inside on this one, kind of knew a little ahead of time that it was in the works. Is that right? Uh, kind of. I mean, we had uh, James Wood actually play the game uh, and you can read his preview on the website, um, but it sounds cool. Um, and having like obviously seen the trailer and, and the screenshots and stuff like visually it's it's really interesting um, it's kind of like a, a very lo-fi but very animated look with a really cool color palette so I like what they're doing there um, it it kind of feels like in some ways an evolution of like the original Prince of Persia and that like kind of sort of new spin on platforming I think like one of the coolest things that James talks about in its preview is the fact that you can sort of wall run up any wall that's behind you while you're like running around which is really cool mm. um yeah I, I think it looks cool like I Dead Cells was great so I have every faith in in someone who's touched that series to be able to pull something off in the genre and the, the like the roguelite genre does that interest you from the context of a Prince of Persia game would it be your um, choice I think so. Like, obviously, like the time mechanics of it all make a lot of sense, because um, I think that's like the how the like how they frame it in the story for this game is that the prince has like this artifact that can rewind time. So every time you die, he it rewinds, but he has to obviously start from where he was. So yeah, um, I think I think it's a great fit. Yeah, I think it it's kind of a, a an IP that lends itself to different different genres, and this one does make a lot of sense. Well, yeah um shannon did you have any thoughts on the art style at all I, I think if i'm not mistaken it's kind of based off like a french cartoonist or like a particular line of it has a lot of similarities to uh tarkovsky i think right okay i'll double check that but Sh shannon like what did you make of the art style it's uh it's obviously quite different from what we got in the last crown yeah i like it i the feel like crown. prince of persia has always been a game that sort of changed things up with most of the iterations in terms of like art style and um, mechanics and I think it, it's bold it stands out 
Um, it looks gorgeous. So I don't, I don't have a problem with it. I like it a lot. Is it one you can see yourself getting a, making a start on when it comes into early access next month rather soon? Probably not in, in early access. I really like Dead Cells, like of all the roguelites, like that's the one I've spent the most time with, I would think across like different platforms. I don't know, when it comes to Prince of Persia, like I do miss the older style of games. Like I, I really used to like Prince of Persia back in the day. So I, from that point of view, like I wish that we were seeing more from the franchise, um, but yeah, it's hard to complain with the pedigree behind the game and, and what it is. I'm sure it'll be great. But I hope there's more for the franchise as well. Yeah. Brody, do you think it's kind of a bit weird, the timing in this one, like so soon after the Lost Crown? Or does it maybe, is it a sign of like a positive future for Prince of Persia as an IP? Um, I think the fact that the games are so different from each other, I suppose. like mm. at a- Jesus Christ. <laughs> Something just falls off shelf. coming for you. <laughs> yeah, oh, my little Bioshock man. Uh, that's okay. Um, yeah, I think the, the fact that the games are so different from each other, like in terms of what their ultimate goal is, I think that probably means that it's not too bad a thing. Like it's not necessarily a crowded market in that sense. But I mean, they wouldn't want to release a game, I guess, every two months uh, for the rest of the year or something. But uh yeah i mm. mean they could have maybe held it to mid-year maybe but i suppose it is only early access it's not like it's coming out fully yeah i, I think that probably suits it quite well like thinking of what kind of hades sort of did coming into early access and taking all that community feedback and kind of yeah. like having some natural sort of growth and positive sort of word of mouth coming out around it i think that's probably going to suit this style of thing and i I kind of hope that's what happens with the lost crown kind of over the next 12 months or so because i i kind of hope by the time award season rolls around um that that game kind of gets a bit of positive buzz assuming it stays in people's i think it was just too expensive it was like 80 to 100 dollars. can't remember the exact amount but it was like up there right which is a lot of people probably struggle to to justify that on like a metroidvania they're probably more accustomed to kind of indie titles occupying that space Um, right hopefully it'll have a long tail yeah i hope so i think you can already get it for kind of like 40 50 bucks it's it has kind of come down in price a bit already um a mate of mine picked it up um seeing as it was discounted and is now really enjoying it so i'm hoping that trend continues although that is just one person um but yeah and now that we've got kind of two uh prince of persia games kicking about this year um it did stir up some news about the sounds of time remake which is reportedly being completely overhauled which i don't know if that's the first time that's happened or now maybe the second time um but this game was kind of first revealed i think back in 20 was it 2019 2020 I think it was 2020 like 2020 yeah a good little while ago it's obviously been um we've been hanging on for it since then uh kieran but like what's your kind of sense of optimism like for the future of prince of persia at this point and i guess more specifically the sounds of time remake uh, um i mean from like obviously the rumors and stuff at this stage but from what like mm. some of those reports and stuff were saying it does sound like they're taking a more like ground up like back to the drawing board approach with the remake and actually like giving it a new identity and like carving out some new ideas for it which i think mm-hmm. is cool um I, like i'm i would be as for that as i would if they just slapped like a hd filter on the original and just give us given us that instead um okay. but it sounds like they're committed to the to the franchise like with these like obviously these two new games and then them putting like all this effort into the remake like it, it feels like they're actually, you know, giving it some recognition, which is is good. Yeah. I'm glad it's not kind of going by the wayside. It's getting a bit of love. Um, as someone that is, yeah, loved The Lost Crown, it's kind of firmly atop my list of uh, favorite games so far this year. Um, I'm kind of keen to see what they continue doing with it. Um, speaking of new trailers, though, because um, there was a trailer for The Frog of... <laughs> Prince per- the rogue prince of- yeah the rogue prince of Persia, <laughs> um, which I didn't mention. But speaking of new trailers, we got a story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws in the week, which is just a totally but- butchered segue. Um, but it did reveal August thirty thirtieth as the release date. Uh, Shannon, wh- how, where is your interest levels at for this game at this point in time? 
I think pretty high. I think we we said when it was first revealed that yeah, everything about it looked fantastic. Um, it feels like a, a true next gen game. I feel like we don't know a lot about games coming second half of this year, so it's nice to have something in August. Like I just mm-hmm. watched the, the latest trailer again before this, and it didn't do a heap for me. If I'm being honest, in terms of I don't know, it just felt a bit more of the same. Yeah. Um, so that felt a bit odd to me, like when you're having like your main reveal of release date and pre-orders and everything else, but. For everything I've seen so far and the few hands-on things that I've read, um, yeah, sound like there's a good reason to be excited. And Ubisoft need a win, I think we can all agree to. So I, th- I think this will be it. Yeah, I'm um, I'm excited for the game. I do want to see more outside of it, these story trailers because I think the last was... It, it felt very similar to what we got last time. Planting. You're looking forward to more planting. More planting. Yeah. Give me some planting and some hollow tactics. I'm all about that. Um, uh, yeah. Like I, I need to see some gameplay at this point. I do love mm. that it's doing something different. It's not just like another Jedi game, um, you know, with lightsabers and force powers. I'd be disappointed. I think if it starts to kind of pivot to that in any sort of way, I kind of very much like the idea of it being just like, um, yeah, this bounty hunter kind of, um, what's the word, um, smuggler sort of style character kind of operating on the fringes of the s- typical Star Wars conflict. Um, and yeah, I think like massive as well. Like I'm, I'm obviously on the record being a big fan of the division. I think, um, their particular kind of brand of game could like suit, uh, the Star Wars universe, not saying that it necessarily is going to be like The Division, but kind of taking the same sort of um, cover-based shooter mentality, that kind of thing, I, I, and their world building to an extent. Um, I'm optimistic that they would do a good job with uh, within the Star Wars world. Brody, how do you feel about it? Yeah, I'm still pretty excited for it. Like, I obviously saw uh, it at Summer Game Fest last year, or at the Ubisoft Ford, I should say, while I was yeah. there um and yeah look i I, to your concern like i really don't think they would take that route because they were very uh passionate about telling that sort of scoundrel story um and Mm. like riffing on like the hans han solo sort of thing so um i would say they'll stick that like right through and uh yeah look i'm really into it like you i'm sort of into the different vibe to uh like jedi Mm. and stuff like that i think there's a lot of stories you can tell within star wars um and yeah, like as much as some of the discourse around the game is obviously exhausting. Um, was there a little bit of a thing about like the pricing and all the different versions? I saw a lot of people blowing up about that a bit, but I'm not exactly Are we still sure like why. Was it just because about they were that at this point in time? Expensive or? There's a, I think the one that rubbed people the wrong way was the ultimate edition. Like the digital ultimate edition was like 200 bucks. Right. Which... I think it comes with like the season pass and some extra content and like early access. Okay. Well, luckily they can um, still buy the normal one and just shut up. Well, yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> still <there. laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. It's not uh, even, I, I think the standard one's not even like a 125. Like I think it's like 110 bucks. So yeah, it's which like, is cheaper in, than a lot of other games. In today's economy, pretty standard. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, look, I'm looking very forward to it. I'm surprised I, that it's when they said 2024 last year, when I saw it, I thought, oh, that's probably mm. going to be late 2024 might slip. So for it to be around like that August, end of August mark, it's actually earlier than I expected. So uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I thought this was going to struggle to make this year. Um, I guess I'm still kind of a little bit on the fence. Like I I would have really liked to have seen some gameplay, but perhaps they're just kind of holding that we'll for definitely get that a, a showcase forward. kind of around yeah. June, July-ish, that sort of period. Um, and then, yeah, kind of all geared up towards the release in, in August. Um, and yeah, like you, Shannon, I'm, I'm pleased that there's now something that's kind of filling, um, that slot in my calendar. It's very good. Um, speaking of Star Wars games though, the developer of Star Wars Squadrons and more recently, the Dead Space remake has been moved on to work on upcoming Battlefield projects. Uh, although the studio's work on an upcoming Iron Man game, uh, has reportedly not been put on hold. Um, Second part to this story, in light of this news, Jeff Grubb revealed sources have informed him that work on a Dead Space 2 remake has been abandoned after poor sales on the first. But EA then issued a statement to IGN saying there was no validity to that story. So, in summary, uh, we've got Motive being moved over to Star Wars, Iron Man continuing, but potentially a Dead Make 2 remake that 
may or may not been happening depending on who you believe in this situation abandoned uh shannon i'm gonna come to you what's your take on all of this do you think there's kind of any possibility that dead space was in the works maybe it was killed off real early i i think it would have been weird for them to do a dead space 2 remake like i think they i can't remember if they said it officially but i feel like they were doing the remake to test the waters um for a new game and all reports mm. say that it didn't sell well which is sad to me because yeah i, I think a lot of people love dead space but i don't know why that didn't you work. especially right like you're a big yeah dead space it's, it is one of my favorites but i don't yeah for whatever reason didn't work um would have loved to have seen a new game i think i'm particularly sad because they're moving to work on battlefield which to me i feel mm. like this studio should just be working on their own thing i don't really want to see that happen to them um but yeah, it, it, it's sad. I, I don't really believe the Dead Space 2 remake. Like, I'm sure they were weighing up all of their options, but I don't believe that they were like developing it um, if, they're, if they're saying that. so Because mm. very rarely do publishers come out and speak about rumours. So if they've done that, I feel like they must feel very strongly about it. And other people have backed that up since. Um, but yeah, I do think this is probably going to be the end of Dead Space as we know it, as sad as that is. At least for a good little while. Yeah, I mean... Um, I've actually kind of got much more affinity with the Battlefield series than I do Dead Space, but you do. I'm not terribly stoked to see kind of what is now a sizable collection of developers kind of all being lumped in to try and salvage the Battlefield franchise. Yeah, and that's um, been kind a downward of in the trend same way as well. Yeah, like 2042 is just not what people wanted. Obviously, kind of like all it's of like, the technical challenges aside. Yeah. Do not call a duty hunt. Give it up. Yeah, it just didn't live up to the content promise, I think, that like kind of people hope from it. And I admittedly haven't gone back to it in a while. I think it has improved. But, you know, there's all this talk now of kind of doing some sort of live, ever-expanding Battlefield just what everyone series wants. sort of thing, yeah. which I just can't see. Just give us bad company. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at. Like, that that was my in on the series. and um, Maybe they are doing a more story-driven that. bad company. Well, supposedly rumor, there are, it? yeah, supposedly they are going to do some more like single player kind of stories in and around the, um, whatever this kind of expanded Battlefield universe thing looks like, um, which I'd, like is cool because I mean, Battlefield one had like some really cool, like single player elements to it. Um, and obviously the bad company campaign, uh, campaigns were cool, cool too. Um, but yeah, I I don't like we've got Criterion working on them now, and that was kind of disappointing enough already for me. So, um, I don't feel like it's the right move. But Kieran, what about you? Do you think there's any merit to this uh, this move? I no, not really. <laughs> I just don't understand like the the mentality of like oh this game failed, so we're gonna like stop supporting it, but then we're gonna try again anyway with the mm. exact same thing or like something similar to what we just did. Like it doesn't, to me, that doesn't seem like, yeah, I don't know. It must make I, business sense to them, but I don't think like at a consumer level, it's what anyone wants. Yeah. I guess they've done the math right and figured we can kind of make more money with you Battlefield so. games than we could in other dead space. <laughs> yeah. You would, hope, you would hope so. Uh, what about yourself, Brody? Were you interested uh, in, the, in the Iron Man game? Yeah, and so that's a, like, Motive must be a pretty big company, I suppose, if they're pulling resources away from these mm. games that we're more excited for, I guess. But, um, yeah, I'm excited for the Iron Man game. Obviously, there's the the wish and the dream that it might, like, riff on Anthem to a degree because they have that tech, I suppose, like, as an EA sort of uh, company. Um, mm. Yeah, look, uh, as far as, like, the Dead Space thing goes, like, I think what Shannon says is right, is they may not have necessarily been working on it, but that's a damn shame, because the remake was really good, and Dead Space 2 is, uh, in my opinion, a better game than the first one. I really, really fuck with Dead Space 2. It's really... Ah, man, what a game. But, um, yeah, so it is a shame. It's a shame to see them probably getting sucked into the Battlefield machine, but, uh, yeah... Uh, look, ultimately, it'll be what it'll be. Nothing we can do about it except, uh, you know, uh, tell them what we think cry. with our wallets, I suppose, yeah, and, <laughs> and cry into our pillows. <laughs> <laughs> look, yeah, I'll I'll be pleased if um, we get some good Battlefield games out of this, but... Uh, there's there's not many good yeah. sales stories going around at the moment. Like, if they're no. few and far between that a, a game, like, exceeds expectations, like Helldivers, that's all I can think of. 
at the moment in recent times. Helldivers, like, represents such good value for players, though. Like, A, it wasn't... Sorry, here I go again talking about Helldivers. Game of the year, I feel. (laughs) But, like, what what was it? 60 bucks at launch? I don't think it was kind of a full-priced release. And I think as far as, like, the seasonal content goes, there's really good return. Like, yeah. the new war bond progression thing has cost you, like, 15 bucks or whatever. But there's no time limit on those. Like, you don't have to try and grind out the battle pass in the 100 days you're given or whatever. Like, um, Yeah, again, Dead Space yeah. was 120 bucks, And I feel like you really have to yeah. want to spend 120 bucks in this economy. In like- this economy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're very true. People are tightening up their pro strings, and rightfully so. Uh, all right, I do have a rapid fire question for you all. It kind of in the spirit of starting the show, talking about Fallout uh, TV series. At this point in time, what is your favorite video game adaptation? I kind of had like movies and TV shows in mind, but take that question however you prefer. Favorite video game adaptation, Karen? Come to you first. I didn't think about this at all. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't read it. Uh. <laughs> I remember telling you that we needed one, and then like that's yeah. that's where I last looked yeah. at the document. <laughs> All right, you've stole that article, and now what's your answer? <laughs> shit. Um, actually, no. Like the OG Sonic the Hedgehog animated cartoon. Oh. Or even Sonic like Prime, like the newer one. Like both are very good. Right. Do you rate the movies? And the movies, yeah. Okay. Um, cool. but I think like the I think like the nineties like era cartoon is probably like peak for me. All right. Uh, I mean, no prizes for me, but I was very, very thrilled um, with The Last of Us TV adaptation. I would have never guessed. So, shock horror. Uh, Shannon? Um, I was going to say the original Mario movie. I feel like that was a movie <laughs> from my childhood that I remember prominently. A, like, a it cult, stuck with me for like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's the first one I can remember, like, playing and then watching a movie for, and it was just blew my mind and impacted my life greatly, I'm sure. <laughs> Like, oh my God, these dinosaurs underground can be <laughs> yeah, these maybe, weird little uh, headed guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe people out there feel the same way about the Assassin's Creed movie starring Michael Fassbender as well. Who knows? Uh, Brody? Uh, Rampage starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> I uh, forgot for that was a thing. <laughs> yeah. No, look, probably, honestly, I have a very soft spot for the... I'm going to say it's around 1994 uh, Street Fighter movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, Big yes. soft spot. Raul Julia as uh, Bison is uh, transcendent uh, in his in his uh, performance. <laughs> transcendent. Uh, he, <laughs> yeah. OG Mortal Kombat as well. A shout out for that. Yeah. Oh Chris- yeah. Christopher Lambert couldn't act his way out of a paper bag as Raiden, but <laughs> look, the rest of it's pretty solid. We should have another Mortal Kombat movie coming out soon, right? The continuation Next year of- or the year after, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, all right. Now it's time for what the wiki, the press up podcast. Uh, game show where the previous week's winner reads part of a wikipedia page from an unknown game and we the contestants must guess the game a point is awarded for each correct guess with the round ending after a person's bagged themselves two points uh brody i'll catch you up on the scoring please because um, regrettably james is still in the lead on 12 points you've all found um me. would you believe it's been me that's closed the gap. I'm up to nine points in second place. Shannon and Kieran are tied in third on seventh, but that's left you in fourth on six points and Harry behind you on five. Well, that um, won't do. So, yeah, I feel like the kind of biggest movers in the time we've not had you in the show and that James has been away, um, Harry's kind of come on the show a couple of times and backed himself a ton of points, which has helped no one really in we terms call of it, the time. We call it the race. no Brody era. Yeah, yeah. Um, and no Kieran did clean sweep a week, if I'm not mistaken, too. So he kind of moved One, yeah. up into the podium chase. Wow. Um, All right, so I got some pretty work swiftly to do. doing that. Uh, but yeah, that's where we are at. I think I won last week, so I prepped some what the wiki questions for everyone today. Even if you didn't, you've done the work, so you may as well read. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right, game number one. The game was crowdfunded through American crowdfunding website Fig. The developers chose golf as the sport to ridicule, Brody. saying that it was Brody. Golf story. Not golf story. Kieran. Oh, Kieran. Is it what the golf? It is what the yeah. golf. Well done, Makes sense. Kieran. I didn't know that was crowdfunded. Uh, you either. Yeah. That was news to me as well, actually. I could, I'd kind of forgotten about it, like coming to um, Apple Arcade and stuff kind of as a launch thingy as well. Um, which does make it kind of strange that it was 
crowdfunded, I suppose. Anyhow, I'm stalling as I adjust the scores. Mm. Um, I picked that seeing as what the cart was next to become a PC um, later this year, which admittedly is a game I totally missed. I didn't know that they had done another and that's already out on um, mobile devices, but there yeah, you go. Shit. Isn't there like What the Bat and everything as well? Oh, really? Yeah, What the Bat is the VR one. God, there's yeah, a whole it's, What the it's great. Universe. There's a What the had. Universe, yeah. <laughs> no idea or about the What the CU. Uh, all right, game number two. <laughs> The game is an action role-playing video game played from a top-down perspective. At the beginning of the game, the players can create their own player character. Players will collect a variety of weapons in the game, and gears are divided into different rarities. Each weapon also has their own unique movesets, and they can be further enhanced with runes to further boost their combat abilities. Gameplay is similar to a Souls-like game. Players can strike an enemy with their weapons, parry, dodge, roll, and block attacks, though all of these actions will consume stamina. The armor worn by the player character will also affect the player's moveset. For instance, players wearing a set of agile armor will be able to perform a fast quick step, which allows players to evade attacks without consuming a lot of stamina. When the game was revealed in December 2023, uh, I might struggle with this name, Janadai Karol? Uh, co-founder of the studio revealed Kieran. that they had been Kieran. I did Brody. Did you have a guess, Brody? I thought I buzzed in, but maybe you didn't. Oh, know. sorry. I, I, no, I, I heard you. Okay. Brody, okay. you're up first. I'm just going to take a punt on no rest for the wicked. It is no mm, rest for the wicked. That's what I was well say. done, Brody. Um, sorry. I'll need to just adjust my volume. Levels you and a little sure enthusiastic I, I clap there when I got it right. <laughs> yeah. was everything. He's like, well, I didn't want Kieran a clean sweep. Um, seven points, Brody. Okay. Game number three. Um, I only picked No Rest for the Wicked because I'm excited for the game. That's that next week. List. Early access, let's do it. Next week, mm. yes. Uh, the game... Game number three. The game is a free-to-play construction and management simulation video game released worldwide for iOS devices in June 2015 and Android devices in August 2015 for Windows in July 2016, and for Xbox One in February 2017, and the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4 in June 2018. The game is also available on Tesla vehicles. Shannon. Uh, Shannon. City Skyline. Not City Skyline. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did you say construction uh, simulator? Yeah. Balancing con- resources such as food, water, and power is an important aspect of the game. Many different rooms can be built, providing different items or stat bonuses. Kieran. Kieran. Is it Fallout Shelter? It is Fallout Shelter. Well done, Kieran. Makes sense. Um, Makes sense. Obviously, I had mobile games on the mind and Fallout was out this week. <laughs> uh, all right, Kieran, with that, with those two points that you've bagged yourself this round, you've moved up into second spot, tied with me, and you'll be hosting next week. Um, and Brody, you moved up into third on seven points, tied with Shannon. How good. Um, but with that, let's bring an end to what was this week's episode of the Press Start Podcast. Subscribe to us on Listen or the podcast service of your choice. Follow us at press.au and visit the site at press.com.au. We've been joined today by Kieran. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on X at hash underscore B-R-A-U-N. Uh, also joining us today, making his return to the show, it was Brody. Thank you. You can follow me on most things at Brody underscore DG. Go read the Fallout review. Go read the uh, Children of the Sun review uh, and everything else that's out there. There's a lot of reviews out at the minute. And short on points today, but never short on style. It was short. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where that was going. <laughs> <laughs> I really did <laughs> it was very good. Yeah. See all of my stuff, but actually none of it. Shannon Christie <laughs> on all the platforms. And I've been your host, you and you can follow me on socials at you and underscore Roxborough. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, happy gaming. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.